everybody, welcome back to Facing Forward. On today's episode, I'm going to talk to Shilpa Anand, an Indian singer and songwriter who is stuck in Dubai right now. Do I wait for the planets to align? Do I really know the one within my mind? Listening to the clock tick to the beat of my heart Wishing I could make my life reflect my art I crave to find my way My name is Shilpa Anand. I am an Indian singer, songwriter, vocalist, composer um, and basically I sing and write music that has a mix of Indian flavors along with uh, flavors from the West. Um, so there's a mix of electronic sounds, there's some jazz, there's some R&B, soul for sure. And I don't know, I'm, I feel like there's no one category. So it's kind of just, you know, beyond all genres in a sense. Like, I feel like I could be like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, because that's my style. and. That's how I've been influenced. I uh, So I would call it like in one, if I had to say one thing, it would be called Indian fusion or Indian soul. It's like mm -hmm. my own way of terming what this music is. Um, but I've heard other people also term it as ambient, um, avant pop, which I'm like, ooh, that sounds I cool. Like that. <laughs> I think it's also just getting harder um, to put a, a, a performer into like a category of genre because so many musicians are really fading like genres together and they're always like i think struggling to like just describe it because it's so, it can be so specific to one artist so when you are developing a new song um where do you draw inspiration from and how do you approach let's say writing a, a song it's definitely a, a some kind of spiritual process i would say um i think that i get inspired uh, a lot of my inspiration and just that energy comes in when I when I'm in a very bad place when I'm feeling anxious when I'm depressed when I'm exhausted with life when I'm feeling identity crisis when I'm feeling existential crisis I think um, you know when I travel and I hear like something from a different culture or when I see something it does spark emotion but I would I wouldn't say it inspires me because you know in that moment you're just taking it all in. I think when I come back from a journey and I'm feeling a bit like oh no I'm back to my normal life and then yeah. you know <laughs> I can't allow myself to wallow because um, maybe something has happened and that helps me actually push out and express mm -hmm. myself. So yeah. a lot of little things do inspire me, like travel, like food. Um, and I think, you know, that those things are definitely a huge part of my palette. But when it actually comes to putting out words, I find that I'm always writing music that comes from a insecure, dark, and just a, a place of trying to understand what is going on within me. I want to continue with that processing the words because I saw I think it was in the like review that you mentioned where um, you were talking about like how complex it is putting things into words and then also being between languages speaking multiple languages it's something that I can probably relate to some degree because I grew up bilingual with Italian and German and then now obviously English but so I was wondering because you you use different languages in your songs when did you decide to just use all of them and not just one? When and why? <laughs> and then how do you decide, a lot of questions, and then how do you decide which phrase is going to be in which language? Oh, wow. That's, these are such good questions, actually. And um, yeah, honestly, because it does uh, get very deep into my uh, thinking and how I express at the end of the day. So yeah. I've always, I, so I have um, in my arsenal, I have five languages that I can use. 
and um, yeah, it's just it, because coming from India, you, you there's just so many languages that yeah exactly, and so coming from the south of India. So we speak one language at home, but because my ancestors traveled from one state to another, which spoke a different language, and then basically we all settled in that other state. So our mother state and the mother tongue is different language, it's Tamil, but the, the state we settled in and lived in for many, 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 many years is Kerala, and that, la that state speaks the language of Malayalam. So I feel there is a mix for me when it comes to uh, the languages I express myself in. I'm very funny in Malayalam, but Tamil is the language I communicate with my family. English is the language I use when I'm most emotional and I need to get a point across. Um, and Hindi is kind of like, okay, I can you know, speak, understand, read, and it's mainly like, okay, I can get by in the North with Hindi. North of India, uh, one of the main languages is Hindi over there, so I can get by. Uh, communicating and as well as watching amazing Bollywood movies so it works so for in terms of my music I feel uh, it, it really depends on the song I don't allow myself to dictate the terms of what is gonna come out because if you listen to my first album Indian Soul most of the uh, the languages that I used over there tended to be either Tamil was the main language and then I've written one song in Hindi so in, I feel like now I'm starting to, uh, like with Align, I, didn't, I wasn't actually thinking, okay, I want uh, some of these, the, the phrase in, to have, uh, to be in Malayalam. I wasn't at all, that wasn't what I was thinking about. But somehow in the moment as I was writing it, it just, those words came out and that's just how I wanted it to sound. Because that's just what the song needed. I wasn't trying to think in Hindi or Tamil or Malayalam or sh even English because I have another song um, that's coming up in the future and that's completely in English. So, but the instrumentation has some Indian flavors. So I try to keep the, the fusion thing. Yeah, just either the instrumentation or my language, the words that I choose. But there's no conscious thought behind it, more just like, I'm here right now, this is what I have in mind. Sometimes it's the melody that comes and that pushes me towards the language I choose. Sometimes the words come and then I'm like, okay, this is what I want to say right now in this song. How can I make it fit with what kind of melody do I put to it so that it sounds cool and, and original and just my style. I was wondering, have you ever felt insecure about that? And like thinking, will you know, how will the outside world <laughs> um, judge that? I mean, to a certain extent, there's no insecurity, it's more of this doubt of like, will people accept this? Will they understand it? Because I, I see it for myself, like I, um, I have very limited knowledge of Spanish, just, you know, some words here and there. So when I listen to some of my favorite artists, um, recently I, I'm very much into Rosalia. So when I listen to her, I feel like I understand from her emotion what she's trying to convey, but I don't understand the exact words. So I, I do feel a bit disconnected because I'm like, ah, what is she so passionately singing about? You know, I <laughs> yeah. wish I knew. And then of course I do the homework or ask a friend or like, you know, figure it out. But there is a disconnect that happens, but there's, there's also that sense of mystery because for whatever reason, she's choosing to express herself in this language. So it just makes me want to actually open up my ears. Uh, the same with my music as well. I feel like I use certain words to convey an emotion and I try to do a thing where, I, so far, where I've been trying to mix it. So that way you have the context with the English lyrics, whether it be the verse, like the verse might have the understanding of what's happening. Like, And then when the chorus comes through and it's in a different language, it's kind of like, okay, she's singing something that is related to someone leaving. Uh, and it's kind of a love lost. So you still have understanding of what it is, Maybe you don't understand what Pogade means or what um, Engeni means, but you kind of get the understanding of like, okay, yeah, yeah. this is what she means. Yeah. Okay, so another thing that I saw was that you're gonna give like a webinar, I think it is, about um, what to do or what you do before and after a performance. And I thought that's actually a great way to get to know an artist because I, I, I'm sure everyone has like their different ways to approach it. So without giving away too much, because obviously people are supposed to see the webinar, 
can you describe like your your process a little bit like let's say you would have a show tonight would you have a special yeah. way to approach the day absolutely so usually so even today it doesn't for me it's a matter of what is happening so it could be a rehearsal it could be at, so on the day of the the webinar as well it was today it could be a performance i have just like one routine when it comes to okay something of special is about to happen and i need to have my energy for it so there's just a bunch of things i do during the day that allow me to kind of set myself up so that my mind is calm my breath is controlled i make sure that um i've done enough in terms of my body so like making sure that the uh, like there's a specific set of yoga positions and just kind of keeping in touch with my body movement and um the breath along with that so there's like a, a specific set of it's called pranayama so i do uh, some breathing uh, techniques in order to like short breaths faster breaths um and then long you know inhalations exhalations kind of just keeping in touch with what's going on within and then of course so that is everything to do with uh my breath and my body and then in terms of my mind i sit and meditate for at least 20 minutes the day of the show or day of the event and um yeah i'm basically just taking some time to i feel like especially right now with everything that's happening i think it's very important to find some space where you can just have some peace and quiet um during the day that is just you time so um i feel like this is my special way of you know honoring myself that i'm going to be doing something today that requires a lot of energy that requires um you know clarity it requires me to be able to communicate and so um i want to be able to give my best self so i do these things and then i also make sure that i'm very well hydrated during the day and that um i'm also making sure that i there are certain things i'll avoid like i won't eat dairy at all you know like otherwise i can it can all just like add to nerves and it can drive me a uh, completely away from my balance and my center so just making sure my diet is good and then yeah all these other things which during the webinar i would go into detail about what my practice is in terms of the breath and 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 just be able to demonstrate it more um so that is what i do on the day and then i will be going into more detail about what i do after a performance which is a whole other thing which you know uh, yeah. i feel like as a vocalist i didn't really know that for the longest time and i just started getting into it because you know after a show or something or after some uh you know whatever thing that requires you to give your energy and your voice um you we usually are like okay it's done and then you start talking to the people or like you know you go into the next thing where you're like okay now you know got to pack up my stuff and all this energy is um being used continuously w- without being able to just be like stop pause take a few deep breaths like yeah. do some you know warm downs you know as much as you do your warm ups like yeah. now it's time to warm down you know i love that you said honoring yourself before you like do something this we should all like honor ourselves more i love that you said that um um and you recently started also like a series on on instagram on igtv um called shelves from home Can you talk about that? What is that? Okay, so I mean long story short, I I mean I I was bored. <laughs> it it was yeah. like what do I do with all my creative energy? Like I was writing music um and then I was also like started teaching some lessons online, but it just felt like I wanted to do something else, something more. And uh one thing that I've always felt a bit uh, uh shy about is actually being like giving myself on a social media platform like being able to just communicate into the void in a sense you know yeah, i'm so right. used exactly cuz like you don't know who's listening you see all these people like coming in but it just seems like uh you know and then they're commenting and then the comments are going and then it's just it's a whole new thing so i felt i always felt a bit like oh i don't know i'm not ready for this so I just decided okay you know what like I'm going to I'm going to start this so it seems like the best time It's so interesting to see what people come up with when they have to <laughs> Thank you so much for watching let me know what you think of this episode in the comments I will see you next week I open the window I open the window